You're listening to the Hello Well with Danielle show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and power related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the second episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. If you are new, thanks for joining, coming on the second episode. I'm super happy to have you here. If you are coming back for the next time, the second time, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate your support and I'm glad you're here and you're here for a really good topic today. Today, I'm talking to something that is really close to my heart in the sense of We've all been there. Um, I'm, we're talking about the real and getting down to the real reasons why you can't stick to habits and goals um, and you, that you are constantly starting and stopping. I don't know if this sounds familiar to any of you, but this is something I used to grapple with all the time. Um, you know, you just start something new. Think of it as New Year's resolution. That's another reason why I don't even do New Year's resolutions. But when I did, I'd be like, I'm all in. This year is going to be my year to travel. I'm going to save so much money. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to get my body right. I am going to be banging by the time summer comes with the best bathing suit body. And so you're like all in, super excited. And then, you know, something happens and you miss a week or day and then another thing happens and then you just feel defeated and you stop. Does this resonate with any of you? I mean, like other examples that I feel like I've experienced or I've seen, I've talked to other friends who've experienced it, like you meditate or you decide to meditate or exercise in the morning and then you're running late and then you skip the day. You're like, okay, I'll just start tomorrow. The next day happens and you're like, wake up and you're tired or you have a migraine and then you skip another day and another day. And then you're just like, well, I've just, you know, I've missed so many days. I might as well just stop. Or, you know, again, we talk about creating a travel savings. I think especially I've heard this a lot of people in our, you know, women of color travel therapy group. People talk about, oh, I want to save some money. I'm going to travel more. And I always tell people, you know, create a travel savings. And they do that. And then something comes up. They're like, oh, there was a really good sale. And so I used that money for travel on some shoes or the money I had emergency come up, like, you know, the pipe broke and I had to use that money for something else. And so there goes that travel savings. Or my ultimate favorite is you say you're going on a diet and I'm not eating any more sweets. Sweets are out. We are not eating sweets. You come into work, you're tired, you're kind of hungry and someone's bought donuts for the office and you're like, well, it couldn't hurt to have a donut. And then you're like, you've now had the donut. You're like, when you get home, you're like, well, it couldn't have helped to have some ice cream the next day. Oh, well, you know, I've already had the donut. I had some ice cream, you know, someone else's birthday. There's cupcakes, you know, it couldn't hurt. And then you've thrown the diet all the way out. Let me know if any of this sounds familiar. I mean, we've all been there. So if this does sound familiar, don't worry, you're not alone. We've all done this in some form or another. Look, we all have good intentions. It's not like we set out to say, I'm going to start something. I want to change my life. I want to change this habit. I want to, you know, create this goal that will make me feel better about myself, but also make me, you know, move closer towards the life I truly desire and say that, oh, you know what? I really psych. I didn't really want this. We want this. We want these changes. We want our life to be better. So we all have good intentions, but let's keep it real. Life gets in the way, but really we let it get in the way. So what is it really that's preventing us from being consistent and sticking with our goals and our, our and creating these new habits? Here are a couple of things that I feel are getting in the way and that, you know, some of the mistakes I've seen people do and mistakes that I've done. Like, I'm not saying all of these, but a few or one of these may be some of the reasons that are holding you back. And so I'm going to give you some of these reasons, but I'm also going to give you ways to overcome it. So let's start. So the first thing I see 
And I like we've all been here. And that's why it's one of the biggest things I think the business biggest mistakes I think often people make is having this all or nothing approach to life. It's like I'm either all in or I'm all out. I'm either fully into this diet or I'm fully out. Like there's no in between. And you're setting yourself up for failure when you have this, you know, there's only two options, whether it's either all in or it's all out. And not having, you know, more of a gray area, you know, allowing yourself to be either I can or can't, but instead saying either I can't or I can't do this saying, okay, is there another option? Is there a middle round of some sort of another? But when you have this, you know, all or nothing mentality, as soon as you slip up, even just a little bit, it's like I've completely failed and you've gone into this defeat mindset to where you're just not going to stay with it any longer. And that just really defeats everything. And you're, you know, it's easy if you have an all or nothing mindset in anything that you do, honestly, it's, you're, there's, it's, it's hard to stay consistent because there is no consistency if it's just a hundred percent or zero pass or fail. Um, and it, it kind of to that same point, when you have the all or nothing mindset, you also have this thing of like, you know, you, I have to do it, you know, the certain goal or the certain habit for a certain time frame to count. Like if, and if I, if I don't walk for exercise for 30 minutes, it doesn't count. Or if I, you know, skip a day in my diet, it doesn't count. Having, again, this all or nothing mindset, just, it's never going to work. Like that is one of the number one reasons why I see a lot of people not being able to stick to creating new habits, creating goals that really resonate with the life that they truly are saying that they want. And then another one, and I think this is like number two, and that's why it's number two on my list. But number two is thinking willpower. All I need is willpower. All I need is the strength and the willpower. And if I have used the willpower, I'm going to make it through. Honey. Willpower is not enough. Willpower is not enough. If you're setting out goals and if you're relying on willpower, it's just not enough. You need more. You need to have, you know, why there's that like willpower is not enough to do anything. Like I don't, there's not even a, a rationale behind it. It's just not enough. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I see often as well is that, you know, you don't have defined goals of why you're doing it. When you know your why behind it, like for me, I love to, uh, well, let's say that I now like to meditate. But when I first started meditating, I kind of was like, oh, I don't understand this. This is taking forever. My mind is wandering. I kind of really don't want to stick with this. But then when I connected my why behind meditating and my why was when I meditate, it makes me feel so more grounded when things come my way. I am not feeling like I'm reacting as much. I'm more grounded to be like, okay, let's deep breath for a second and I can communicate versus flipping out on someone. So being able to, so when you don't have a why that's strongly connected to your habits and what you're trying to do and the life changes that you're trying to make, that makes it really hard. So either you don't have a defined why or it's loosely connect, you're loosely connected to your why really will make it so it's easy for you not to stick to something because you're going to start and stop because there's no reason why. And the other part of that is not taking it seriously. You know, we set these goals, especially New Year's resolutions. I think when you have these New Year's resolutions, it's like oftentimes people set these because we're like they think this is what we're supposed to do. It's January 1 and I'm supposed to set a new life, new year, new me. So what do I want for new year, new me, new life, new year, me? Um, let's see, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. And then you don't take it seriously. You say I'm going to lose 30 pounds, but you don't create a plan. You don't create an exercise plan. You don't have a tracking system, like all these things when you aren't taking something serious, whatever, whether it's, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to write a book, but then you don't, you know, look into the steps. Okay. What is needed to write a book or, you know, maybe I need a coach and all these things. If you don't create a plan or take it seriously, it's really hard to stick to something that you say you want to do. Like if you're not serious about it, of course, you're not going to stick to it because you're like, eh, 
I could do it or not do it. It don't really matter because I'm not serious about it. Um, Another one is, and this is an interesting one that I think people don't really think about, is that, you know, old habits die hard. You know, we have that saying, and old habits are just that habit. Habits that feel so natural or things that we do that feel so natural that when we try to create and interrupt things in our life and change new habits and goals and try to better ourselves. When old habits get in the way, it's so easy to slip back that we don't even pay attention to it because these habits and patterns have been so natural that they're second nature to us. And we need to recognize that these things are second nature to us. And to that same point, it's not always comfortable changing Like it gets uncomfortable when we're trying to do new things like exercising, like eating better, like, you know, going out of our comfort zone and writing a book or even for me, creating a podcast. And so you see a lot of people, I hear like the statistic, like a lot of podcasts don't make it past like episode 10 because A, they're not serious about it. It gets uncomfortable coming up with all the material for a podcast and then just stop. And it's easy when we things get uncomfortable and we're out of our comfort zone. And oftentimes when you're creating these things where you're trying to, you know, make these habits or, you know, change your goals and, you know, do new things, it's not in your comfort zone and it's going to feel really uncomfortable and it's going to feel icky. And when we feel that way, And again, if we're not serious about it, and if we are serious about it, still, sometimes when it gets so uncomfortable, we just feel like, well, this is uncomfortable. I just need to stop. I said I wanted to do this, but I'm uncomfortable now and I'm going to stop. Trust me, there's often times I wanted to stop exercising. I'm not necessarily an exercise person. But oftentimes back in the day, I would say like, I'm really going to get my body in shape. Like I, I, you know, I was athletic as a kid. I could totally do this as an adult. I remember telling my parents when I was a kid, I laugh now about it. Like, I don't know how you guys don't exercise. Like when I grow up and I'm older, I'm going to exercise every single day. And then I became an adult and realized, um, yeah, um, that's not going to happen because some days I didn't feel like it. Some days I was tired. I had a migraine um, and I just didn't like it because it was uncomfortable. And so I stopped because I didn't have a why behind my exercise. And again, I really wasn't taking it seriously. And it was all or nothing for me. I was like, either I exercise like I was when I was younger. And mind you, when I was younger, I was playing competitive soccer. So I was playing soccer or exercising every single day. So my mindset at that point was, if I'm not exercising every single day, X amount of hours, then it's not, it doesn't count. And so if it doesn't count and I can't keep up with that, then I might as well stop because this isn't comfortable anyway. Another point that I see often, and I'm hell good at this, and I'm going to guess that I'm not alone in this situation. So if this is you, just let me know. Send me a DM. Say, oh my God, girl, that was me. Um, Our inner lawyer. I don't know if it's that I'm a Virgo. I don't know if it's I'm a recovering perfectionist. I don't know if it's that I wanted to be a lawyer at one point in time. But my inner lawyer is so blanking good. This girl can justify absolutely every excuse. Why didn't I exercise? Because I, I just, I, I had a migraine. I have like, how do you expect me to exercise if I can't literally get out of bed? There's my excuse, you know. Um, oh well, you know, uh, it's raining outside. Like, how do you expect me to go for a walk if it's raining outside? Or you know, there's wildfires outside. Like. Dude, seriously, you know, I should like, I I could die from the smoke. Like, should I really put my life in jeopardy and exercise? No, that inner lawyer can come up with so many dang excuses that you, you believe everything and you feel justified right for 
every reason why you didn't do it to the point that, you know, each time he or she comes up with these justified excuses, it's another day you aren't doing something, another day you're not doing something, another day you're not doing something to the point you're like, well, you know, at this point, I said I was going to exercise X amount of times a week and we're now three months in and I can count pretty much on one hand how many times I've exercised. It's time for me to say, let it go, let it go, let it go. Again, I can't sing. I'll be the first one to admit. I don't know why I even try it sometimes. Um, And you just stop. That inner lawyer is fierce. So, and, and it's, a, it's letting her get in the way and letting her justify is, and if you even let her even start the conversation of making it justifying excuses, yeah, you're always going to stop and start things. It's just, it's just, you know, it just is what it is. And the last thing, mistake I see often people are doing um, when they're trying to be consistent in creating a habit or, you know, change their goals and stuff like that is not tracking your progress. You don't track your progress. There's no basis for success or wins. How are you going to celebrate what you don't even know what you've been doing? And, you know, when you don't have that ability to see, okay, so I have, you know, been making these steps towards writing my book. Or I have been making my steps towards, you know, creating this business that I said that I had. And, you know, from this is my game plan. I said from this point to this point, I'm going to be at this stage and what I'm doing. But if you're like, oh, I'm just doing it and you're not tracking it or looking back and like, oh, OK, let's see. I said I was going to start a business. Look, I've created an LLC. I, you know, created, you know, social media accounts. You know, I have a bank account that a business bank account and, you know, I've hired a life coach and I'm creating, you know, this, you know, proprietary program or I've created, you know, a concept for a product and then having all these steps and then, you know, planning it out. And again, this can relate to absolutely everything. It can be, you know, to, you know, eating better. Like I say, okay, I am going to eat healthy. I'm not going to necessarily go vegan or vegetarian, but, you know, three times a week, I'm going to, you know, make sure I'm, my plate is more full of vegetables or plant-based diet versus being heavy in carbs or meats and stuff like that. But if you're not tracking it somewhere, you, and it's hard to be like, okay, what was I doing last week? Did I eat three times a week that last week or I don't know. So again, so those are the top, what I'm calling eight mistakes that I see people make. So kind of running that down again. Number one was, you know, having that all or nothing kind of approach to, you know, creating, you know, healthier habits and setting goals to kind of live the life that you truly want to live. Number two is thinking willpower is enough because it's not. Uh, Number three was not taking things seriously Number four was not having a defined why. Why am I doing this? Or it not being, you know, fully connected to your why. Number five is like letting things get uncomfortable and it will, and then feeling like, oh, it's uncomfortable. I have to stop. I just can't do this anymore. It's uncomfortable. Uh, Number six was letting old habits get in the way and not recognizing that old habits are hard to break, but they are breakable if we are intentional. Number seven, that good old inner lawyer. And then number eight is not tracking your progress. So how do you overcome all these things? You can, it's totally doable. Um, Some of these are easier than others, but it's totally doable and you can stick to something if you incorporate some of these things. I'm not saying you have to incorporate all of them, but just incorporating some of them will make a huge difference in whether you're able to stay consistent with creating the life that you're saying that you want to create by creating new habits and setting new goals for you or just trying to, you know, not procrastinate on a project Um, because I have definitely been a procrastinator. So these also help with this as well. So the first one is being honest with yourself. 
and start asking you like, ask yourself, why have previous attempts not worked in the past? And really get to the root of the excuse or why you're giving up. When you start understanding and really getting to the root of your situation, is it a limiting belief? Is it, you know, that you need to take some barriers out? Like if, you know, if it's food and, you know, and you're trying to not eat sweets, are you keep buying them? Like think about what really is the root to the excuses that you're making or inner lawyers making or the reasons why you're giving up. And when you get to that root, that will help you understand and overcome to be able to be consistent. And the other part is starting small. Set realistic expectations. When you come in, again, it's that New Year's mentality. I'm going to do this, this, that. This is my new year, new me. And you're saying, I'm going to create 12 new amazing habits. And I'm, you're not going to recognize me because I'm about to get my life together. Honey, it is hard to create 12 new habits. It's just, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible because depending on who you are and, you know, if you have a why behind it, yes, anyone can do it. But I am saying it can be a lot more difficult when you try to do a lot at one point in time. And a lot of times, especially when you're trying to change and shift something, your body and your habits, your mind's like, ah, uh, no, uh, uh, I can't do this. This is too much. I can't, I can't, I can't. And then when your body and your minds are saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, you're like, well, I guess I can't. So start off small, set realistic expectations, and you'll be able to, again, measure, track, and see how you're doing. And when you're able to see wins, wins will help you get more motivated to keep going. But when you have so many different things, it's a little bit harder to see the wins and it's probably a lot easier to see what you're deeming as failures. And then you're just like, well, mm, I guess it's, I'm just going to stop. Um, number three would be being committed, but not having this all or nothing mentality about it. Allow for flexibility. Like know that things happen in life and, you know, things and, and allow for those time frames where, you know, you may have to shift something or shift your, your goal. Like you you may start something and realize, okay, I said I wanted to do it this way, but maybe, you know, I, I, this is the way I want to do it. Or, you know, I said that my goal was to, you know, do yoga, you know, five times a week, but then realistically, maybe I feel like, you know, maybe it's not yoga, but maybe it's just some form of exercise. Like, again, allow for flexibility and be committed to that, but not in a sense where it has to be all or nothing. Know that there's always in between and ask yourself, okay, so I said I wanted this instead of having this all or nothing mentality. Is there a middle ground? Is there another option that I could be thinking of? So give yourself that flexibility. And also, number four, you know, dust yourself off quietly when you, you know, forget to do something or you, you know, don't do something for one day or one month or whatever it is. Just dust yourself off, like, you know, Jay-Z said, and start again. But the reason I say quietly, oftentimes we can, you know, dust ourselves, we say we're dusting ourselves off, like, you know, oh my God, like I said, I wanted to have the best body and I was so horrible. I, you know, ate everything. I wasn't exercising and, oh, I'm such a bad person and this, this, and that. And when you don't just say, okay, sis, I didn't do it Um, yesterday. I didn't, you know, I didn't meditate like I said, I was going to meditate. All right, let's just today's a new day. Let's just start over. But when you don't quietly do it, you're actually kind of coming from this. It becomes a little bit dramatic restart and you're coming from almost a victim mindset. And that doesn't help at all. When you have that victim mindset that really will play into, well, oh my God, like, uh, uh, uh. And then you just kind of just start and stop all over again. And it makes it much easier to start and stop all over again. So, you know, being able to start all over again, let's say like, okay, it's like every day is a reset button. It's a new day. Okay. So I didn't do it last yesterday. You know, it's okay. I'm just starting all over again and I'm not penalizing myself. 
I'm just starting over and it's not even starting over. Today's just a new day and we're picking up. It's not a reset all the way. It's just, I'm just starting uh, picking up and it's kind of moving forward from there. Um, And then the other one, and this is definitely a huge one, is redefining what success and failure is to you. You know, if you, you know, one way to think about it is like, you know, you're not, it's not about hitting hard constantly or, you know, how hard you work, but it's about being intentional about how you're working and moving in a way that works best for you. Not what society tells you need to be doing, but what works best for you and staying consistent what works for you. What works for you to stay consistent, it can be completely different than what you're reading in magazines or what your girlfriends are doing. So finding what works for you and not going and I have to, you know, have this hustle hard mentality, but what works for you and being intentional and how you move to help you stay consistent. And the other important point with that part is, Girl, remember, who's going to check you? What you deem as success is your success. It don't matter what someone else thinks is success. What is success to you is your success. And don't let anyone tell you anything different about that. And that goes for your failures, what you deem as failure as well. You know, you've had these habits and patterns that you're trying to change probably for years. Let's be real. And so it's going to take a second for your mind to kind of trick itself into shifting into these new patterns and habits. And it will come, but you have to recognize that, you know, and give yourself grace that it's going to, it's going to, it may take a second. And so what you deem as a failure, shifting your mindset and saying, okay, this is not a failure. Okay. I just, it may just take me a little bit longer and giving yourself that grace, um, which is another one is giving yourself grace and this time frame to know that it's okay. Like when you let your inner mean girl, I always have the inner inner something. So there's an inner mean girl, there's an inner lawyer, but the inner mean girl can be a bit B. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. The inner mean girl can be a B. And she's just going to come at you hardcore like oh my god look at you like you said you wanted to get your life together but sis you're not doing all these things when you don't have self-compassion it's so easy to let her get in your head and for you to just give up you you have good intentions again we all have good intentions when we start but you know when that inner mean girl and we don't have that self-compassion when she starts yelling at us loud you just stop because you want her to stop You want the pain to go away. And so, you know, having compassion for yourself and being open to shifting your mind is so huge. And the last one is about removing those barriers. You know, if it's, if you're trying to eat better, like removing the unhealthy foods that you have, if you're trying to, you know, remove toxic relationships from your life, remove yourself from certain situations. I know for me this year, I've been really intentional about who I spend time with. And of course, part of me was like, you know, I get that guilt feeling like, but you know, these people should be important in my life. And these people have been there for this time frame. But if this is something I'm serious about, which I was, and this was something that connected to a why, which was, it makes me feel better when I don't have these toxic relationships around me. And removing them was a healthy way. Like you can, for me, I like, I could have stayed with them, but I was like, no, if I remove these situations, I'm able to get closer to the life that I say that I want to live. And so having that connection to my why, you know, being committed, consistent, um, really, and being mindful about how I showed up for me. And then also digging to the root of why was I holding onto these relationships and what was my excuses for holding onto these relationships and not giving them up, having myself kind of go through all those different things. And again, removing that barrier was a game changer for me. So you don't have to do all of these things, but I will tell you incorporating some, if not all will really help you stay consistent, the habits and goals that you're trying to create and be consistent with will stick more. And you'll find yourself 
not stopping and starting things, but you'll find yourself being more consistent and being able to reach the goals that you said that you want. But again, all this comes down to knowing that A, you are worthy of making these changes. You are worthy of the life that you choose to live and you're worthy to have the life that you want, but you gotta make the choice. You gotta make the choice to say, am, is, am I serious about this? You know, can I change, you know, this all or nothing mindset? Can I quiet the inner lawyer, the inner mean girl? Can I give myself grace to, you know, know that, okay, I'm trying to shift some old habits and it may take me a second. I may have to start and stop again, but I'm giving myself grace to say, that's okay. And who going to check me? I'm going to define what is success for me. I'm going to define what is failure to me. And I am going to know that I am worthy and that I can dust myself off and then I can be committed. I can start small and it can you know make a huge difference. But you got to make the choice. Are you ready to make the choice? Let me know. So that was our topic for today. Uh, I would love to hear from you guys. If you and kind of continue the conversation, make sure if you aren't go to like Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook or Instagram. And I'm going to continue the conversation. I want to hear from you if you have other ways that you've that have helped you, you know, stick to habits um, or goals and stop starting and stopping. I love to hear it. You know, I love that, you know, this community is a place to where we can all work together. I don't have it together. I always tell people I'm not a guru. I'm not an expert, but I am a girl who is trying her hardest to live a certain lifestyle. And I'm making sometimes what could seem hard decisions, but I they've helped me get to another level. And I just want to continue helping other women on this wellness revolution just to let's work together to continue to live the life that we truly desire versus faking the life that we're like, okay, I'm cool with this, but really I'm not cool with this. So that's the show today. Next week, you have to tune in. I am just thrilled to have my guest. Uh, Her name is Stephanie Johnson. Uh, She is from uh, Vegan What. She is an amazing uh, entrepreneur, but she is like the bomb. She is so dope. She is beyond dope. I love her. Like the conversation with her and talking about veganism comes from a whole different perspective that I don't think people really always talk about. So you got to tune into that conversation if A, you ever thought about becoming a vegan, but also talking to her just shifts your mindset about why you may want to eat better and how you can eat better. You don't have to be vegan to eat better, but ways that you can really honor your body and eating better and really thinking about it as, you know, being there for your family. So I won't give more information because I feel like I'm about to start blurbing it out about how amazing this conversation was. So I'm going to end there. I will see you guys next week. And other than that, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here and we're out. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.